what else do we have here what else do we have here okay next on the list oh we have this interesting stuff courtesy of hype beast pleasures ada superstar collaboration is designed for changing moods um off the bat i like the look of them of course because they're all black if you know anything about me you know i love all black shoes especially with the you know contrasting accents or something that just pops off right whether it's you know this sort of like iridescent stripes whether it's a white lines whether it's um no, so whether it's iridescent stripe, white lines, a contrasting swoosh, different stitching. But in terms of the base, I love an all black shoe. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's from, you know, spending too many years in school. <laughs> or maybe it's because of the area that I grew up in. But there's something about all black trainers or with predominantly all black base. Like I think of the Jordan 4 breads. Those are probably one of my favorite colors of any sneaker of all time. That color is a classic. It works. It's probably the only kind of mostly black colorway that can work with really light jeans that can work with a white pair of jeans right that can work with shorts that can work with combat pants chinos it's just such a versatile color i don't know why it is don't ask me why maybe the same people have the same sort of feelings towards stuff like white stan smiths and white air force ones but for me all black sneakers bs that is this stance so when i see these pleasure superstars uh, right pleasure superstars I'm, I'm like instantly gravitate towards them but then i do honestly remember there was a time in my life where i tried to be the ada superstar boy um during a very brief period when i used not brief period but during a very pivotal moment when i was in church is that pivotal or pivotal pivotal moment in my life when i used to go to church quite often a lot of the boys i used to hang around with at the time used to love wearing either stan smiths and the idea back in the days was to wear stan smith with like boot cut jeans and like a really nice designer shirt right and at the time for some reason people like to also have the tongue be a little bit puffy so what they would do is that they would get another sock fold it and then put it into kind of insert it into the top of the sock they're already wearing so you got a little lump on the top of your foot and then you wore those and that would make the tongue puff out a bit experts like myself would sometimes get that sock and kind of stitch it or glue it to the back of the actual tongue but sometimes it would move around so the best thing to do is to get a really tight sock and then put that sock inside of a sock and then have that kind of thing popping off but unfortunately my feet are long i wear a size 10 euro 44 40, 44 45 and maybe my right foot is like a 10.5 so I always have a bit of problems. But the main thing that's my big problem is that I have a really wide, aka fat foot. So when it comes to sneakers, like an Ada Superstar with this very narrow toe box towards the front that really points up, it's sort of similar to like a, um, a football sneaker. It's really lights out for me. It can't work. And I love them. It's probably one of my favorite silhouettes all, all, all around. I remember having a really great time wearing them when I was in school. And like I said, um, when I was in church, they were like the... They were as good as Prada sneakers back in the day, like all white ones with like the black stripes. I think people used to get them from Foot Look at the time or JD Sports. There's a little hang tag that hang with them that you would hang on the side. You'd kind of cross out, you'd kind of tie them and kind of skip loads of lace hoops. So you kind of go maybe from the bottom all the way to the top, like eyelet, sorry. That was such a great shoe, really, really great shoe. But unfortunately now in an era where I like, you know, I kind of... Um, Maybe because you get older, I kind of prioritize having comfortable shoes over having shoes that look very stylish. But unfortunately, nowadays, the most stylish shoes or the most, yeah, the most stylish shoes aren't very comfortable. So you kind of have to do this. And I think I learned my lesson with my um, Balenciaga triple S's, which I basically hardly ever wear. And I spent a lot of money on them. Right. I've got the original black pair, the black and red pair, kind of basically the bread, the bread pair. And I just can't wear them too often because, unfortunately, I got a size 44 because my they were, the 45s were too big. They were basically like a, a standard UK 11 and they were way too big. And, of course, the triple S's are, you know, super fat elephant foot of a shoe. So I thought, let me get the 44s and take out the insole, which usually works out pretty well for me. I got them, they're fine. But the is it, yeah, no, it's not my right foot, it's the left foot. My left foot with the flipping extra bunion on my pinky toe and just the general width of my, you know, my forefoot. Yeah, that's it. My forefoot's really wide. It's just so annoying, man. Maybe because I was kind of, I've kind of fixed it now with a lot of squatting and a lot of like foot mobility workouts. But when I was younger, I was really flat footed. So that might be a reason why as well. Like my, my feet kind of splay out that way. So when it comes to wearing like narrow shoes, like anything with a van, like a Vans or like a Converse and stuff, I always have to kind of go half a size up just to kind of accommodate for that little bit of wiggle room at the front when need be. Obviously, when I wear them often enough, that kind of toe box area does kind of stretch out a little bit. But when you first get them, the pain is excruciating. 
But these are really nice, man. I'm not going to lie. All black uppers with the sort of iridescent um, stripes on the side. Um, they're not on either Superstar 80s, it looks like. Maybe they are, but it doesn't look like it because they've got a little bit of padding on the heel there. Maybe if I'm not mistaken, the padding on the heel does usually... Um, Maybe it's not. Maybe because the padding... Usually, it's a padding on, on the tail bit and also, like, little metal hoops on the eyelets usually are an indication that they're not 80s. But the shape does look really, fairly nice for it to be a just a standard GR. The shape is really nice, isn't it? It's like a flat silhouette. But to be honest, that's what one thing Adidas have really smashed Nike on when it comes to retros. They've really done a good job in terms of getting the original tooling, the original molds, or maybe just, sorry rebuilding them from the ground up because i remember that was a big thing people used to always stay connected with nike which was always a lie they would chat so much shit nike but they always have us over a barrel ready and willing to kind of you know do anything to get their sneakers but i remember back in the day when i used to go and screw your tongues a lot and used to be surrounded by all those sneakerheads and they kind of had a bit of infant information they used to always say the reason why nike would ruin retros like i think of like the air max light which is still another tragedy in terms of the air max um range and shoes what nike did to it and how it came out vis-a-vis -vis how it originally originally was released they said the reason why it looked so horrible and they had that weird bananas foot thing and the paneling on the upper was all messed up was because they hadn't they didn't have the original tooling and um, the original molds that they basically made the air max light with right and to make it from scratch supposedly it cost like a million to make like a mold of a shoe and i guess you'd have to iterate it out in terms of a mold for a shoe then per size i don't know whatever however you manufacture or make a shoe to make the original mold just cost a lot of money and they used to say that back in the day. And I remember thinking, hold on, Nike make billions, right? They probably make at least like half a million. No, they probably make, they, I'd, I'd imagine they make maybe close to half a million on just the sales of Air Force Ones worldwide alone. So how are they now kind of trying to justify and say, oh, the reason why we can't make a good retro or a retro that's kind of, um, you know, that sort of lends itself to the original that when it originally, to the original that came out is because they can't make the tooling again it's like huh that doesn't make any sense they make they legitimately are able to make shoes out of like recycled bits of newspaper and you're telling me that they can't retool a base of a model so that's where i thought you know what i just really smashed them in that part because they took their retros really seriously when it comes to the campus when it comes to the stan smith when it comes to the um S superstar when it comes to the forum when it comes to the zx series like they've always there's always they've always said okay if we're going to do a collaboration and we're gonna you know we're gonna go to these sneakerheads and tell them hey you need this zx 700 which you probably have 50 million in your flipping collection we're gonna make it worth their while we're gonna improve the materials we're gonna make the shape as true to the original as possible and we're gonna keep the numbers actually limited so when you know and unlike look unlike with nike or with that way unlike with like with nike i think adidas and new balance do a good job of it like if you actually buy a limited edition adidas or new balance you feel as if it's limited edition like you can't usually find it readily available anywhere else where it feels like with nike they put out a limited edition shoe you've got all these sneaker resets on instagram standing in front of stacks of shoes that look like they're in a the stock room somewhere all around the world right it's not just one kid it's like millions of kids all around the states basically it's all around the states that have somehow are able to get whole shoe runs of shoes then all the retail uh, partners that they have who also have the shoes. Then all the influencers. You're like, hold on. How limited are these really? Are they limited or are you just limiting where they sold at? They're not exactly limited though, are they? they I mean, that's the actual stipulation that to put in. And then later on down the line, they didn't decide to just, you know, completely, you know, um, squeeze that limited edition uh, range dry. Look at the Travis Scott collection. And it did Nike are just not stopping with the amount of shoes they're putting out um, with Travis Scott's name attached to it. So at least with Adidas, if you do get a, a shoe, collaboration with Adidas, especially stuff like this, like a pleasure shoe. It's probably not going to be the most popular shoe out there in the world. Pleasure is probably a little bit of a niche core sort of like streetwear brand. It's may maybe some people don't like it, but still it kind of, you know, maybe has a very small niche. So only a small amount of people are going to buy it. You know, you purchased this, not a lot of people are going to have it and it is what it is. But the Nike shoes is like, they're limitless, mate. It's legitimately limitless. So if you've got the money and the funds, you can basically get any shoe you want from Nike regardless of when it came out any shoe you can get it brand new in your size like it's pretty insane if you think about it legitimately like it means like what most people that buy nikes don't wear them or they just make too many of the shoe and they lie to you about the quantity who knows but regardless i quite like these pleasures um ada superstars again i'm not too sure if they're in 80s i think they're probably not yeah, all black with basically a translucent sole that says pleasures on the bottom the only thing i don't like about pleasures which i've got to be honest about is the font on the of the logo like, it just looks too, like, the fonty. I guess it is a, a probably just a, a basic uh, font, stock font, I think you could get maybe with a few tweaks here and there, but it just looks so, like, 
Times New Roman-ish. That's the only slight I would say about pleasures. Like, that's why I wouldn't necessarily wear like a logo hoodie of theirs with the kind of name splayed in the front of it. It just looks a little bit amateurish. Maybe it's just me. I don't know. I've never really liked the font. But in terms of what they put out there, in terms of their collaboration, in terms of some of their art direction, like it's always top notch. Uh, the, the, let's read a bit of the text here. It says, um, taking on the classic footwear model, the Los Angeles label, uh, dressed a shoe in black smooth leather, accompanied with a matching show to so the, the, the translucent free stripes branding on the sole is, um, can be customized to fit the changing moves of a tiny reusable interchangeable pattern inserts. What? Of the sole? Of the insole, they mean? Oh no, of the actual stripes. You can change the stripes inserts. So it's not, it's not um, iridescent. Okay. Interesting. Why do you do that? Um, let's read that again. But the translucent free stripes branding on a shoe can be customized to fit the changing moods with 10 reusable interchangeable patterns. I don't like the mood thing. That sounds like a mood ring and a mood bracelet and all that malarkey. That's a little bit G-A-Y, but hey, we continue. Insert design range from animal prints, plaid, tie-dye and gradient patterns, flames and graphic displays. Additional branding elements come in the form of the pleasures printed on the red, rubberized marking in the rear and Adidas dossing on the heels. Elevating the shoe, uh, the back mid, are uh, the are black midsoles paired with translucent rubber tr outsoles uh, with uh, that obscure Pleasures logo underneath. That's pretty cool. So you can change the actual stripes on the outside. Is it cool? Isn't it? I don't think it's that cool, really. It's a little bit, mm, it's a little bit naff, to be honest, isn't it? So I guess that Pleasures is what, does that does that double up as the E in the name with the little free shirts that you can just slot in there or whatever it may be? I don't know. That sounds a little bit, yeah. I, I'm not really a fan of the little inserting things. It's, it's what, what next? Are they going to make flipping wheelies? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Black shoe I'm a fan of, the inserts on the side not so much, but hey, we can't win anything, we can't win everything.